coming up at four minutes and 40 seconds, a big moment. This is where the RS-25 engines and their bleed go to high flow. It's been a little tricky to dial in. GLS is go for LH-2 high flow bleed check. Good work, we've passed that. The cryo team got the LH2 engine bleed pressure loop dialed in. They are now at the right temperature for launch. Countdown continues. T minus four minutes, 15 seconds. Up next, GLS fires up the KPUs. Those are high speed turbines which provide pressure to hydraulic pumps that steer the RS25s. Stands for core stage auxiliary power unit start. GLS is go for core stage APU start. That now leads to the thrust vector control test at T minus two minutes and 30 seconds. That can proceed now, and we will see the engine's gimbal at the bottom of the core stage. Yeah. T minus three minutes and 10 seconds, you will hear the go for purge sequence four. That's a helium purge of the four core stage engines downstream of the propellant valve, getting the air and moisture out. GLS is go for purge sequence four. And in just a few seconds, GLS will close the core stage locks vent, liquid oxygen, the white vapor cloud caused from the super cold gaseous oxygen condensing the water in the atmosphere will disappear. You see it coming out there now. And there it goes, it's closed. Locks vent closed, pressure rising in the core stage locks tank to flight levels. Coming up in 15 seconds, look for that thrust vector control actuator test. Engines will gimbal. And there they go. The four core stage RS-25 engines gimbling around, testing the ability to steer the rocket into space. They will operate at 109% performance, each RS-25 throwing down a half million pounds of thrust, all four, two million pounds, all together with the boosters, 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. GLS is good for upper stage to internal power. Now the upper stage has gone to internal power. So power is removed from the rocket's upper stage, the ICPS, and it's been switched to battery power. The same milestone is coming up for the core stage at T minus one minute and 30 seconds. Rocket's core stage, which houses the three flight computers, is now on battery power. So there is no more hold time available because there's no more margin on the battery. So if we hold, have a hold, we'd have to recycle back to T minus 10 minutes and recharge those batteries. The count continues. A note now, shortly after liftoff. One minute. Shortly after liftoff, Mission Control Houston will take control of the rocket, and my colleague, Leah Cheshire, will take over Morgan. commentary. T-minus 50 seconds and counting. Coming up at T-minus 33 seconds, the GLS will hand off control to the ALS. This is the autonomous launch sequencer. On board the rocket, it will take over command and control of the rocket. But the ALS will check, make sure there's no holds coming from the ground up until T-minus GLS is go for ALS. And we are go for ALS. The Space Launch System is now counting down to liftoff of Orion on its maiden voyage to the moon. Launch team can no longer recycle the count. Sound suppressor water now flowing under the ML. And here we go. Hydrogen burnoff igniters initiate. Seven, six, five, four stage engine start. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition and liftoff of Artemis 1.
we rise together back to the moon and beyond. All four RS-25 engines on the core stage and two solid rocket boosters now propelling the vehicle at 128 miles per hour. Carry good, con good control on the roll from teams of Mission Control Houston. All good calls so far. Now 30 seconds into the flight of Artemis 1. First milestone will be for the vehicle to pass through max Q at about 1 minute and 9 seconds into launch. This is the greatest period of atmospheric force on the rocket. traveling 607 miles per hour. You're looking at 8.8 .8 million pounds of maximum thrust quiet here in the loops of mission control. Full four stages and some throttling down ahead pass on the max Q. Stage engines are back at maximum thrust. The next major milestone will be for the solid rocket boosters to cut off and jettison at about 2 minutes and 11 seconds into the flight, so about 30 seconds from now. Again, quiet here in Mission Control Houston as teams continue monitoring the flight of Artemis 1. We're now 16 miles downrange from the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center, traveling over 2,800 miles per hour. Standing by for solid rocket booster jettison and shortly thereafter. Confirmation that the solid rocket boosters have separated these 177 foot boosters. Now the core stage continues to power the flight of Orion, all four RS-25 engines firing, traveling over 3,400 miles per hour, 46 miles downrange. Two minutes and 36 seconds into the flight. Hearing nominal calls here in Mission Control Houston. We've still got four good engines on the core stage. Next up, we'll be looking for the service module fairing to separate. This is three 15 by 15 foot fairing panels, providing structural support, protecting the service module. Those will separate at about three minutes and 11 seconds into flight, and very shortly thereafter will be followed by the launch abort system separation. Just over three minutes into the flight of Artemis 1, now traveling over 4,060 miles per hour, 83 miles downrange. We just had confirmation that the service module fairing has separated. And that the launch abort system pyros have fired, separating those from Orion as well. For future crew members. We just heard the call for three engine press, meaning if SLS were to lose an engine at this point in the mission, we could still achieve a nominal mission. We would just have an extended main engine cutoff time. However, we still have four good engines, all at maximum thrust right now, powering the first flight of Artemis at 5,200 miles per hour, 148 miles downrange. We're four minutes and 16 seconds into the flight of Artemis 1. So far, we've had a clean ascent. We saw those solid rocket boosters jettison about two minutes and 11 seconds after liftoff. Shortly after, we had the service module panels fairings separate, as well as the launch abort system. The launch abort system was inert for this flight, except to perform this separation. Those four core stage engines will continue to fire and power the flight of Artemis 1, now traveling over 6,800 miles per hour, 229 miles downrange. Booster flight controller reports that the engines are looking good. Our core
four-stage main engine cutoff time.